welcome to worship at Edmonds United Methodist Church. No matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what you believe or doubt, no matter how much or how little you have, no matter your race, gender, or immigration status, and no matter whom you love, you are beloved, belong, and are welcome. We say these words every Sunday to remind ourselves that even though the world sometimes places limits on belovedness or worth, God doesn't. So friends, welcome. Good morning, church. It's good to see all of you this Sunday. My name is Ann Jacob. And I'm Joanne Coleman Campbell. And we serve as your two pastors here. Uh, happy Trinity Sunday. It is indeed. Uh, and you'll hear more about that during our sermon. I just want to acknowledge our flowers today. Uh, they are from the Andrew Hershey Memorial Service that happened yesterday afternoon. And there's a typo in our bulletin about that. And so I just wanted to acknowledge uh, the flowers that we have, as well as the Hershey family who we hold in our prayers. If you're joining us in person or online, we invite you to fill out our Connect card. Uh, you'll find it in the pews as a physical card, but it's also a QR code in the bulletin or online where we invite you to connect with us and let us know that you're here. It's our way of connecting with you over the next two weeks and uh, taking attendance of sorts. Uh, to, to keep track of our worship attendance over the summer. It's really bad form to call somebody and say, we've really missed you, and you've said, I've been there every Sunday. <laughs> and say, but you didn't sign in, so how are we supposed to know? So, anyway. So, during our uh, offertory, we'll invite you to submit the Connect card into the plate, um, or if you fill out the virtual form online, we invite you to do that in the next few moments. So, with that, I invite you to settle down to breathe out any anxiety, tension, uh, worries, and breathe in the Holy Spirit and let us worship. To you, O people, wisdom calls. She calls out to each of us, beckoning us to experience peace in Christ, to discover the truth of life, to know true love as it's poured into our hearts. Wisdom calls as we gather this day let us answer her call as we celebrate faith in the one who leads us into life. Amen. Amen. I do want to acknowledge our pride banners today that are flying for the first time in our sanctuary. Uh, we are celebrating our seventh anniversary as a reconciling congregation this June. And we had a mother-child duo who actually painted, created, and made these banners in the form that they are. They were inspired off of Pinterest, of course, and uh, the stained glass pride flags. You can learn more about them in the bulletin. There's a whole page talking both about the flag and the inspiration for it um, and the context within our society today. But we are really grateful to Doris and Fiona Black for their contribution to our sanctuary this June. As we continue in worship, uh, we invite you into our Christian tradition of passing the peace it's our way of reconciling our hearts to one another and to God, and our way of doing it includes uh, saying something like, the peace of Christ be with you, and an elbow bump, or a peace sign, or gesture from your heart, or if folks are okay with it, a hug. Um, we recognize that for some of you, it might be new to see a, a face with a mask that you don't recognize necessarily. It's appropriate to say, hey, what's your name? Uh, and introduce yourself to one another, we are a congregation who enjoys community, and so we encourage you over the next several moments to greet one another in Christian love. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you.
You may be seated. Until oh hey there I am. Good morning, good morning. Um, my name is Risa Vargas and I am the director of Family Ministries. And I would like to invite any children, young at heart, young people who would like to come up for a moment with children to come on up and join me. If this is your first Sunday with us and you're not sure, you can wait and see. But everyone's welcome, and parents can come with you if you need a little a little help. Um, but this is a time, I'm gonna invite y'all to sit here and I'm gonna sit in front of you uh, to come on down. Oh, I love seeing new faces and returning faces. Good morning, everybody, so good to see you. Come on over. Good morning, friends, how are you doing? Good. How was everybody's week? Did anything cool happen? Where, where was your field trip? Oh, cool. So you went to the Seattle Aquarium in Bainbridge Island? That's a fun field trip. That's pretty cool. And you got ice cream? I bet that was the best part of the day, huh? Yeah, for sure. Ice cream makes a good week. Well, I am so happy to see you all. And um, we have a lot of stuff happening in our church right now. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about a couple of things. So the first thing is, right now I'm the director of family ministries. That means I get to do all the cool, fun stuff with kids, have the best job in the house for sure. But um, I am, in three weeks, I'm going to have my last Sunday. And I'm going to be moving on because I'm moving back to L.A., where I'm from, to be with my people. And so I am cherishing these moments with you, but I also want to tell you that Someone really cool is coming in August, and his name's Michael, and he's gonna be really great. So even though it might seem sad or weird, but some of you just met me and I'm already leaving, there's good things coming, and I wanna, I wanna remind you of that, okay? And even in the meantime, there's gonna be VBS, and there's gonna be all kinds of stuff for you. And so I want you to know that your presence matters in this church, and that you matter to this church. Young, old, everybody is welcome and matters in this church, which I think is pretty special. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. But I just wanted to, to talk to you guys and let you know that even though I'm leaving, good things are coming. And this church is going to continue to love and support you no matter who's on staff. So know that, okay? So I have a special book for us today. It's mostly a picture book. So I'll show you the pictures, but it's called A Church for All. And I chose this one because today we're kind of celebrating pride in our church. We have our rainbow banners. We got rainbows on the screens. We're really celebrating pride. And it's Pride Month, right? Yes. When is your birthday? June 21, summer's first day. That's pretty awesome. Well, happy early birthday. And next week, if you're here, maybe we'll sing a little happy birthday to you. OK? And that's pretty cool that you have a pride birthday. Yeah, come sit closer. Hi. Oh, I love you dressed perfectly for the theme today, and I love it. OK, so this is called A Church for All, and it's by Gail Pittman. And I'm going to do my best. It doesn't have a lot of words, but it has a lot of pictures, OK? So first, I'm gonna, we showed the cover, right? So it has some things that are sort of like our church, right? It has, what do you see that's kind of like our church? Yes. A lot of people, what do you see? The rainbow banners, yeah, what else? You forgot, that's okay. Do you see anything else that's like our church? Okay, yeah, they got a pastor, they got people, all different kinds of people. They have people in wheelchairs, they got people of all different colors, pretty cool. So let's see what this book is about. Sunday waking, so there's a family having breakfast, right? You guys have breakfast together before you come to church, yeah? Or chaotically eat a bagel on the way to church, that's also okay. Day is breaking. We got people on their way. Look, there's some people still getting ready. There's someone running really late, that's probably me. 
let's go to our church for all. And so we got all these people meeting in front of church. Church bells ringing, joyful noises. So there's people greeting outside, riding their bicycles. We have people who ride bikes to church. We got people who walk to church. We got people who bring the bus to church. Wow, yeah. Choir singing, laughing voices. Our choir's not wearing robes today, but they do wear robes sometimes, often. Yeah, today they're in their, their regular clothes. Candles glowing, banners flowing, come and enter our church for all. What do you see in this picture? Not a lot of people, okay. The rainbow banners, yeah. And we got like little kids running through the church. We got people holding hands. There's a baby in a bassinet. This church is for weak and healthy, neat and messy. Everyone is welcome in this church. You're messy when you leave. I'm messy always. With your greasy food, you get your hands messy? Yeah, sometimes that happens. And God still loves us. Isn't that cool? Poor and wealthy, plain and dressy. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you dress fancy or if you wear sweatpants. Everyone is welcome. I like wearing sweatpants all the day and night, too. I don't blame you. That's a pretty comfy way to live. And God still loves us, even in sweatpants. All embracing, spirit gracing, each one at our church for all. Okay, so now the congregation's more filled up, and there's all kinds of people in there. Uh, yeah, it's part of it. It's from the cover, yeah. So we got the pastor. You see so many people in there? Right on. So we have um, all kinds of people in wheelchairs. We got people with tattoos. We got people wearing glasses. There's all kinds of different couples. There's all kinds of representations of people, and I think that's very cool. Let's see what's next. Bodies wiggling, mommies reading, children giggling, daddies pleading. So we got some wiggly kids in there who are very welcome in our church. We got a couple of daddies begging a baby to be quiet. We got all kinds of stuff. Toddlers flailing, babies wailing. There's room at our church for all. You don't have to be a quiet, calm person for God and this church to welcome you. Everybody's welcome here no matter what because you get to come exactly as you are. Hands receiving, hands connecting. This is like the passing of the peace that we did this morning when you get to say good morning to all different kinds of people. They're not making food. They're saying hello. Hearts believing, hearts accepting. This is a picture of people praying. Mm -hmm. I like that too. Feel the spirit. Can you hear it? And there's a choir singing, and they have a guitar player and someone playing the piano, right? Just like us. We have all of those things today. Pretty cool. And more. We have a lot more than just that, but it's pretty cool. It's all here in our church for all. And it shows everybody um, singing together, right? And the pastor is exclaiming. So I know that this book doesn't have a lot of words. The message is really in the pictures, which sorry to the non-children people who didn't get to see it, but you can check out this book at home. And this is just a really beautiful book that shows that church is for everybody, no matter how old you are, no matter how loud or quiet you are, no matter how still you can sit, you are welcome in this church. If you are gay, straight, trans, Sis, it doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome. This is a church for all of God's people. And that's what we celebrate during Pride Month, and that's why we have our banners. And I think that that is so wonderful. And so I want you guys to commit to helping me make this a church for all, even when I go away. Can you help me with that? I believe that you can. Maybe? Think about it. We can talk about it more later if you have questions. (laughs) Can we pray together? Let's pray. 
God, thank you so much for this church for all. Thank you for making space for every kind of person that you have imagined and created. Thank you, God, for making this a place where every single person has a spot on the pews. Thank you for the noisy kids. Thank you for those who can't always hear what we're saying. Thank you for those who sing loud. Thank you for those who are just here to quietly receive. We ask for your blessing on everyone who enters our doors and those who are still thinking about it. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we do not have Sunday school today, but if you're um, younger, you can go to the nursery. And for everyone else, I can meet you in the back and help you get some activities to take to your seat. Does that sound good? All right, so I'll meet you guys in the back or in your seats, wherever you wanna go. All right, have a great day. Good morning, church. My name is Sue Ann. Please stand in body or spirit. 
The first scripture lesson for today is a reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 in the Common English Bible Version. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The second scripture lesson is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and proclaim it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's why I said that the Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. 
As Pastor Ann mentioned at the beginning, today is Trinity Sunday, and I know that you all just live for that day, right? <laughs> Thoroughly understand it, know exactly what the Trinity means, and could explain it in 10 light words or less to a child, right? Actually, children are probably the ones that understand it the best because children understand mystery, and that's what the Trinity is about. But I can tell you that one of the things that is very clear when we talk about the Trinity, what we're really talking about is love, God's love, Jesus' love, the love of the Holy Spirit, and our love. In the Gospel of John, he talks about how all of this is intertwined, that Jesus says, everything I have is yours, he says to the disciples, and everything God has is mine. And therefore, everything that we have is yours and yours is ours. It's this flowing of the Spirit that goes through and amongst us to God and back to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit. It's this community of love in the fullness of what we know God to be. I have heard throughout the, uh, my career as a pastor, and probably I think I felt this my way, myself at some point, I've heard a number of people say, I don't feel worthy of God's love. And they're right. We're not worthy. But that's not what it's about. God doesn't love us because we're worthy and not love us because we're not worthy. We would spend the most of our lives trying to be worthy for that love. God loves us because God is love. It's who God is. And God created each one of us to be amazing and beautiful and wonderful. And you know, part of our journey is to come to the fullness of that, is to appreciate and understand our own beauty, our own wonder, our, how amazing we are. Not up in the puffed up way of a braggart, but in the way that comes when you have been so thoroughly loved that you know you are love as well. We know that most people who are bitter or angry or vengeful or spiteful do that because they don't feel loved and they generally don't love themselves. So what Jesus is saying here, as he says for five chapters, starting in 13 and going on to 18, is that God is here for us to fill us with this amazing love and grace and love us into the full being of who we are created to be. So next time you see somebody who's being unlovely, Love them. It's that simple and that hard. In the gospel, I mean, in the letters that Paul wrote to Romans, this chapter five is um, the first five verses are some of my favorite. It's, you know, I, I'm not very good at memorizing Bible verses, but this is one that I've put to memory. It starts off with um, Paul saying, since we are justified by faith, and there's this, ongoing theological argument that's been going on for years, probably centuries. Does that mean our faith in God, we are justified because we have faith in God, or does that mean we are justified because God has faith in us? And the answer is yes. It's like love. It flows back and forth. As God has faith in us that we can become who God has created us to be and has given us this life to engage in and learn to become that fullness, then we begin to have faith in God. And to be justified doesn't mean to be made, you know, like I'm going to justify myself, I'm going to give the reason why I do the ways I do. It means to be made right. It's the same word that we use, like if you hold a plumb line up to see what's in line, what's straight. It means to be made right in relationship with God and with one another. And again, it's this triune God, this spirit, this Jesus, this, this God, the creator, 
that flows through us to help bring us in alignment with God's love and our love for each other. But then he goes on to this, this whole thing about that we are, uh, we, we boast or we brag or we glory in our suffering or our troubles. It doesn't mean we are really glad we have suffering. It's not that. It means that when we are suffering, when we are in trouble, we still give God glory because we understand that when we go through suffering with God or when God goes in suffering, God joins us in our suffering. When Jesus, who knows ultimate suffering, walks with us, then it builds endurance or or patience. And we can endure the troubles, the suffering, because God is with us. And as we do that over life, we build character. And it's not the kind of character we think about, you know, when we see the little ones and say, oh, that one's got a lot of character. We saw a couple of those this morning. Um, Or even when we say, oh, that person's a real character. What we're talking about here is sort of the Greek word um, that I was going to write down so I could tell you what the Greek word is, but I forget what it is, but I know what it means. The Greek word has this implication of being purified, like the refiner's fire. And so it's like when metal is put, silver is put into the refiner's fire, it, it gets so hot that the dross comes to the top and they label it off so that it's pure silver. That is the word for character there. It's when we've gone through enough suffering and endurance knowing that God is with us that it purifies us. It makes us stronger. It makes us truly more who God created us to be. There's also the implication in there that, in the Greek, is that the embossment on these coins is the character. Is that that's word is that's used. And so I like to feel like that as you go through troubles, as you endure them and have patience and don't lash out and don't get bitter and don't give up hope, that God's image is being even more impressed upon us. And when we have this character, we have hope that doesn't disappoint. It's not the kind of hope that is wishful thinking. It's the kind of hope that says, we know that all things work together for the good if God is in it, right? That that if we endure and if we continue to be love to the world, then there is hope that this world will learn love. Every, uh, I want to give you sort of a practical example of this. Every pastor, whether they tell you this or not, has a heart church. It's the church where the the congregation stole their heart. And while we fall in love with all of our congregations, um, at least I do, um, we fall in love with our congregations, that there's some churches that... The, the spirit amongst them and with the pastor is so complete that you know that you are sort of the best of who you are and you are the fullest of who you are and you learn more about what this true love means. And I have to admit, and I can do this because I'm an interim, right? Um, I have to admit that Cheney United Methodist Church is my heart church. I only got to serve there three years before the bishop sent me on. But um, the reason that I love this church is that Cheney loves its pastors. They've never had a bad pastor. Can you believe that? (laughs) Never, if you listen to them. And in their minds, it's true. Because when a pastor comes in, like the Spirit, they just flow around that pastor. They see what that pastor is good at, and they lift that up and let that pastor become even better. And when they notice that the pastor is struggling with something, they fill in. 
So if they get a pastor who doesn't do very good pastoral calls or doesn't do them at all, the congregation's doing it. And they say, we come in the name of the church and our pastor because we love you. We're coming to visit you. You know, if they notice that the pastor's really lousy at administration, and I can tell you there's a whole lot of pastors like that because they don't even teach it in seminary. Um, but then they come around and do the work of the church administratively. And, you know, even if the pastor's not really great at preaching, then they gather together in their groups and they said, that was, I mean, I'm struggling to understand what the pastor is saying. I must not have been listening well. So let's explore together what was being in those scriptures and what the pastor was saying. And they will come up with all amazing things that the pastor said that the pastor doesn't even remember saying. You know, right now, Alyssa Birch is their pastor. They only have her for a few more weeks, and they adore her. They love her. She's a very good pastor, and she's moving on to Spokane Valley. And they're really, really sad. And at the same time, they're really excited about their new pastor that they know nothing about, but they already know they love him. He's coming from Germany. He's a United Methodist pastor from Germany. He, he did his seminary in the States. They're so excited to be having them, him, and they can talk about that with Alyssa there because Alyssa knows she's thoroughly loved. And she knows the gift that she will give this new pastor by giving them the congregation. And before Alyssa was Terry, and they love Terry. And before Terry was me and they loved me, they told me I was perfect. And I believed them. Of course, they told that to George, who came before me, who's a good friend who I went to seminary with, who I think is very quirky. And I love him too. And on down before on, they loved their pastors. And they figured out how to become one with that. But it wasn't just the pastors they loved. They love each other and each and every person who walks into the church. Actually, they love their, their small town, their community. They're not a, a small, small church. They've probably got 125, 150 people. Uh, they have two services because their sanctuary is not really big. They're, when I get together with some of them, um, they talk about all the ministries that they're doing as exciting, that they found a new ministry, they're new, doing something you know, else and finding new ways to be needed. But within the congregation, I'm sure that when I was there in three years, there was annoying and irritating things, but I can't remember any of them. And that isn't just sort of that kind of memory that you, you, know, you gloss over everything. It's that nothing was big. Nothing was huge. They figured out how to do it. And when each person came in, they already knew that when that person walked in, they loved that person. They just had to figure out how and why and, what, and how do they convey that love to the person that came in to the children that are there. It was a noisy worship service. I have to tell you that. It was kind of noisy because children are noisy and there were a lot of children in there and they're noisy. And I do have to remind you all, especially during the summer, that we often don't have nursery care in the nursery because we only have one person or we don't have Sunday school or we encourage kids. I always made all my kids come to church worship service before they went to Sunday school. And they can be noisy. And when they start distracting you, you do, do what Cheney does. They go, oh, listen, it's a kid in our service. Isn't that exciting? I just want you to know that when I brought all my five kids to church, when my husband was the pastor and I wasn't a pastor, I always sat in the front row because then I couldn't see anybody turn around and look at me <laughs> when they were being noisy. All five of them lined up there, you know. They were perfect. Nobody looked at me. <laughs> so um, they also knew what my snap of my finger meant. No matter where I was in the church, I could hear them, and I could snap my fingers, and they'd immediately, you know. But Cheney would love each and every person there. One of them was Margaret. Margaret was an older woman. She's gone on to glory now. Um, very uh, rail thin, kind of dried up kind of crabby, and they just loved crabby old Margaret. And she ruled the kitchen. 
which for the whole size of the church wasn't much bigger than this little kitchen out here. So when Margaret was in the kitchen, she was a presence. And she didn't like things going the way she didn't like them. She'd let you know. And they would just kind of flow around her and love her and conjole her. And when she would snap at a kid for getting more than one cookie, they would either distract her while somebody else stole the cookie for the child, <laughs> or they would say, oh, thank you, I'll take my, oh, I actually don't like this. Would you like this? And give it to the other child and say, thank you, Margaret. That was so nice of you. That's a church that loves because they're lovers, not because anybody was worthy of love. They love because that's how they understand God's love for them. And even the crabbiest people, even Margaret, get loved into being lovers themselves. When I left, um, there was a number of different presents as pastors get because, you know, I was the most beloved. And they gave me lots of gifts. And Margaret comes up at the end of the service, and she's got a little yellow teacup with a little tiny cactus in it, hard-packed soil. And she says, I've never got this thing to grow here. <laughs> that was her gift. And it was a perfect Margaret gift because it was kind of dried up and it was prickly. But it was in a bright yellow cup. And so I took that, that cactus and I repotted it and I loved it. And now it causes my husband a lot of problems because it keeps growing inside the house. You know, it's gotten quite tall. It's one of those column-type cactuses. I've cut it and made cuttings out of it and given Margaret cactuses away. And I choose try, kind of people who are a little prickly. <laughs> and I say, you know, love this into being and it will keep growing. And it does. And Margaret's love keeps on giving. And I just say that it kind of gets in my husband's way because that's where he pulls, push, put, plugs in his computer when he's working at the dining room table. And he has to get through my cactuses to get the, the, um, uh, the plug in there. Um, the Trinity, my friends, is about community and what we do about it. So I invite you to let the Spirit flow through you, amongst you, in between and around you, as the song said, to, to be with you in all ways, and let God and each other love you into being who God created you to be. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, for chilly and soon to be hopefully sunny summer days, we give you thanks. Sometimes we forget to notice the small ways you make yourself known to us. The chirping of birds in the morning, the breeze that enables the trees to dance, clean water that sustains life. In the midst of our busyness and our preoccupations for summer plans and times of rest, help us to recognize and remember those for whom life is unrecognizable and painful. For those undergoing health procedures, surgeries, and are recovering, we pray for your healing and grace, particularly for beloveds in this community, Joyce and Tom Nicolazzi, Beth Laney, Charles and Carol Townsend, Donovan Clavino, Avila Akala, our Ukrainian refugee families, Mariah Kendall, John Rodenberg, Stacy McGraw's parents, Sigrid Milner, Pat Beaudry, Tina Barner, Deborah Moritz, and Peggy Cousins' brother, George. For all those who are mourning and grieving, we also pray for your spirit of peace to cover them. And in particular, for the family of Andrew Ann Brown, for the family of Andrew Hershey, for Dale Hoggins, Beth Laney, Norma Thompson's son Earl, and the Fritz family. God, for all those who are wrestling with how to live into a new day, a new way of being, we ask for your wisdom and love. And in all the ways that we come to you this morning, in person or online, dressed in blazers and dresses or pajamas, in tears or with joy, help us to understand our belovedness. Bless this congregation and our whole world. Help us to be to one another and for one another, embodiments of your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with me, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in a language or a translation that connects with your heart or as you see them in the slides and bulletin. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, we have a practice now of highlighting ministries in our church through a ministry moment, and I invite Angela Malloy up forward. She is our director of Vacation Bible School this summer. Uh, Angela is a child of this congregation, a young adult who is in seminary at Isla Theo Theology School in Denver, in Colorado, online, doing it remotely, and she'll be our seminary intern this fall. We're very excited for that, and I welcome Angela to talk about Vacation Bible School with you. Good morning. My name is Angela Malloy. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve on staff on the Family Ministries team. This year, I have the immense privilege of directing our Vacation Bible School, the first in-person VBS we've had in three years. VBS is a critically important uh, part of our children's faith formation. By extensively interacting with one Bible story for the entire week, kids learn to ask beautifully deep questions of our tradition and of God. Some of my best memories growing up at Edmonds UMC take place during Vacation Bible School. This fun intergenerational learning experience welcomed my curiosity, challenged my perceptions, and taught me that my voice mattered to our community. You all told me and so many other children that Edmonds UMC values the perspectives of young people that our insights were valid because children are beloved, belong, and are abundantly welcomed by this congregation. 
Now you can continue to nurture a community of belonging in the next generation of amazing young people. After a necessary break, I am so excited that we'll gather together for VBS in person this year. But I need your help to make this a wonderful week for our kids. This year we are adopting a curriculum called Renew, the Green VBS, which will help us to explore environmental justice through the parable of the sower. Each day we will gather together for opening and closing sessions filled with music, skits, laughter, and prayer. We will gather for a communal snack time where we will enjoy healthy snacks because as we learn to care for the earth community, it is equally important to care for our body, mind, spirits. Kids will rotate in small groups divided by age through seven different stations. Connecting with the story and learning to care for our planet, our human and more than human neighbors, and ourselves through science, games, crafts, drama, music, spiritual practices, and a gardening action project where they'll care for the grounds of our church. All preschool to incoming sixth graders are invited to join us July 18th to 22nd from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. daily for a week of fun, faith formation, fellowship, and finding out how we can love this beautiful planet along with the creatures and people who live on it. VBS is $50 per child and financial assistance is available. All teenagers, I hope you'll join us, Gigi. All teenagers entering seventh grade and older and all adults are invited to volunteer. There are many different jobs available, but what we desperately need to fill up this time are our shepherd and assistant shepherd roles. These lucky people get to move with the small groups to each station throughout the morning, getting to know our fantastic young people and encouraging their participation in the activities led by each station's wonderful volunteers. All volunteers are invited to a volunteer training after second service on June 26th with a light lunch provided. And if you're unable to make that training, I'm happy to meet with you at a different time in person or on Zoom. If you would like to help but are unable to join us in person for whatever reason, you can still help. I invite you to take a tag from the wishing tree by the door over there and donate to help us pay for snacks, for t-shirts, or to sponsor the registration fee for one of our participants. Kids, you can help us prepare for this fun week too. But, um, bring in your recycling items, food boxes, cans, bottles, and more for our craft projects and place them in the bin by the VBS bulletin board by the office. Thank you to everyone who has already registered. You can find the registration links on our website at edmundsumc.org forward slash VBS. Or if you're here in person, come see me, see me at our VBS table in the narthex. Thank you for considering how you can help to make this an incredible week to grow in faith, have fun, and change the world. Thank you, Angela. Uh, many hands will make light work, and so I encourage all of you to think of ways you might engage with Vacation Bible School this year. Friends, now is our time for our offering, and our ushers will be coming forward in person uh, to pass the plate. You may offer gifts in three ways today. You may give it in person, you may give it online at edmundsumc.org give, or you may mail a gift to the church at 828 Casper Street. Edmonds, Washington, 98020. I invite you to give with generous hearts. And the song today is fantastic. I really do hope you listen to it with extra plugged in ears. I think I've written many a sermon to it and like most definitely listened to it like a hundred times. So I hope you really enjoy Declaring Glory. When I was young, you woke me with the sound of song. The wind and rhythm drew me along. I echoed in the hymn of the dawn. I turned and turned this dance that all the planets learn in circles when the stars as they burn. I praise you as I hold.
will scroll before my eyes Gumbo and send the seasons of wine Then turn again, embracing the time The waters fall And carve their way across my soul Their canyons cutting deep in my soul I praise you while the river still rolls pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts, and we ask that you bless them, that they may be an offering to this community of love, your grace, and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, friends. We have a few announcements for you. First, we have Dinner Church back in person this 
Sunday, today at 6 p.m. This is a service we had pre-pandemic, but we hit a hard pause on because we couldn't gather in the same ways, but today it returns in person. And if you're not familiar with Dinner Church, it's our Foundry evening service. It's a contemplative service, but the liturgy changes a little bit. So we meet in the Wesley Room, which is just adjacent to the sanctuary, and we have multiple tables set up, and we have a meal together, and the liturgy is of table, quite literally communion table, but also of table, we feast. And so I enjoy you, uh, invite you to come and enjoy a meal with us, but also enjoy fellowship with one another and a service that's very informal. Kids are all welcome. Uh, and if you're just thinking, gosh, I don't know if I wanna prepare dinner tonight, it's covered. So you should come, you should come. All are invited, it'll be so fun. We have uh, music and ministry and all the things that are wonderful. So that's Dinner Church. Our Easter offering, we collected during Easter tide money for the United Methodist Committee on Relief, which is a United Methodist agency that supports disasters, human-made, but also natural disasters all over the world. And at the moment, they're involved with assistance in Ukraine, humanitarian assistance there. And a group of congregants challenged us to raise money and that they would match a certain amount of it. And this congregation over Eastertide raised $68,000, a little over $68,000 to go to Ukrainian humanitarian assistance. So church, good job. We're really grateful for your generosity. Uh, the first batch of that has already gone uh, to UMCOR. The second batch of it will go this month, uh, things that just came in over the week. And we're really, really proud and grateful for your generosity. The last announcement that I have is Kevin, our facilities manager, has injured his shoulder and he's unable to tend to some of the needs of our grounds and he's not allowed to based on our state laws that deal with employment. And so we really need all of you to pitch in and help, as Pastor Joanne would say, with lots of weeding. And so if, you're, uh, if you enjoy or are just able to help us, we would really, Gigi, Gigi has already volunteered. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you, Serena. Um, <laughs> and so uh, if, you're, if you're young or old, doesn't matter how old you are, but if you're willing to help out on the grounds, you'll find in the bulletin all of our needs along with Kevin's email address. And really at any point in the week, he would love for you to come and help and he'll give very clear directions or make a video of what he needs and send it your way. Um, and we would really appreciate your help over the summer and into the fall. Yeah. Either that or we just have a lovely crop of weeds this year. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> um, I have a couple of announcements. One is the All Church Book Study on the Art and Skill of Conflict Transformation is uh, getting some good signups. I appreciate that. I'm opening up a new class by Zoom on Tuesday evenings. It's there in the bulletin. And if you ordered a book, uh, it's probably in the, uh, at the table, the hospitality table. You have to wait till Cheryl gets from there to there. Right, Cheryl? Um, and she's going to help you with your book. It's got a name on it. If, you, if your book isn't there, that more are coming in on uh, this week, probably tomorrow. And uh, we're hoping also for those of you who just want to pick up a book, you can do that. You can also order it online. But I do encourage you to continue to sign up for that. Next Sunday is uh, the, the 19th is our own um, Greg McLaughlin's uh, last day here as a youth director. He's not leaving the community, but we are celebrating the many years of youth ministry that he has done in this church. He will, uh, it's also grad Sunday, graduation Sunday, so um, he will be preaching and we're excited to do that. And then following the worship service, there'll be a reception for him. And then the last Sunday, as Risa uh, talked about it on the 26th, is her last Sunday. And we encourage you to come and say goodbye to her. She is incurring a fair amount of expense um, moving down, as you know, and trying to find rental in LA, which is very expensive. So if you wish to give her a card with a gift, that is uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, I think that is it to remember to take uh, a tag from the gift tree. I suggested that we put it right in front of the door. 
but we did move it to the side. <laughs> so, uh, but don't forget to do it. Or next week, it might be right in front of the door mm-hmm. where it looks very conspicuous if you don't get something as you go. No, just kidding. Um, that's, I think, it for the announcements. I will say, uh, as people start coming back in person, you might say, gosh, I don't recognize a few folks. That is okay and welcome. And what I'll invite you during coffee hour today is go up to someone who you don't recognize and may not know and say, hi, my name is, and invite them maybe to share their name and you might learn one fun fact about your new friend. I'll invite you to do that at coffee hour. And the fun service. thing about masks is that if it's somebody that's been here forever and you should know, you can say, oh, I would have recognized you except for the mask. <laughs> so, right? That's a good way to cover it. Yeah. I appreciate that. So. Friends, with that, I invite you to rise and body your spirit for our closing hymn. in a worship service where the pastors really worship is during the music. And every week, I think you can't outdo each yourselves. And every week, it is just amazing. I thank you this morning for the incredible music that you have shared with us, for your skills and your gifts. I kept trying to think, what's the best? 
And while I loved the bass over there, I'm supposed to say that all the time. I also love the strings over here, and the choir did amazing, the drums. I was just watching. How does she know what to do in all of these different things? And just, it's just amazing. And so, thank you. And that's when the spirit really flows amongst us, is it not? When we sing together, then we can all fear the spirit. Really all female instrumentalists. Ooh. All female instrumentalists? Except Jesse, but still. Well, Jesse. But just <laughs> and David. It's Anne's statement, not mine. <laughs> Children of God, go out into this world being love, knowing that no matter what the troubles or suffering, no matter what patience is required of you, no matter how hot the refining fire. You have hope that will not disappoint. For God is with you in all times and all places and loves you and fills you with grace. So go in the power and the love and the grace of our Creator God, our Redeeming Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.